Ciao, buongiorno, wherever you are and whatever time it is in the world right now. Thank you so much for joining us once again for the Interworldwide podcast. And we are in great form here at Interworldwide, but you know, more importantly, the Ragazzi are in good form down at the Miazza. And today we saw that and to talk all about it and much more are my trusted guests. Alessandro, how are you, my friend? Very good. Hi, everybody. That's good. And Mario, yourself, how are you doing? Oh, I'm having a great time. That's great to hear. So, boys, fresh off the back, another win. And this one, probably the best one of the lot. And uh, just so many things to talk about, so many factors to go into place. Alessandro, what were your thoughts on the huge win against Rapid this morning? Um, the, the, the guys were playing a very good football. I, I know the adversary is not the best around, but um, the they are playing uh, the the best soccer we have seen this season probably, and I think uh, not having um, Icardi right there and like the only um, fulcrum of the game that helping everybody around. But that's I guess that's something we're gonna discuss later. Yeah, absolutely. And Mario, your thoughts on getting the good 4-0 win against Rapid and getting us into the round of 16? This was the Inter I like to watch. This is why I am a fan. The, the way we played today is exactly how we should be playing every single game. Um, <clears throat> the team looked so confident. I, I don't care who their opponent is. We've struggled so many times against you know, shitty teams like this. So just to see us go in there with confidence, and there was not one second where I was like, Okay, maybe we'll let up. This is kind of scary. Not one, not for a second. Every time we had the ball, it was calm, collected. We moved the ball pretty, uh, very, very, uh, very nicely. Uh, the combination between Perisic and Lautaro Martinez and Nayangolan, it, it looked like they've been playing together for years. Um, so this is a, if we can keep these kind of uh, performances up, I think we're going to finish off the season really, really, uh, really strong. That would be great. Um, I, for one, really, really enjoyed the first half. I was only able to watch the first half, but it was so good to get out to that comfortable 2-0 lead. And as usual, it was the big boys that stepped it up, Perisic and Nangolan. I guess you can really, really tell that the team had come together today with a different level of confidence. But what I really want to talk about is not just my guy, but our guy, Mario. And I'm sure you will agree to an extent, Alessandro. Andrea Ranocchia getting that second goal outside the box in the first half, that was just peas for me, the best of the best. And seeing Spalletti clap like that, it was almost everything in Tedeschi in a way. What do you reckon, Mario? Uh, it was beautiful. It was better than any goal Icardi has ever scored in his lifetime. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I would I would even go as far as to say that Nokia should be starting forward. <laughs> he looks like a natural. Uh, no, but you know, it's good to see him score like that. You know, we don't need him to score, but look at look at how many uh how many different people score? We had four different goal scorers in one game. You know, in the past six games before Icardi uh, was benched, we couldn't, we barely could score with uh, one or two people at a time. Yeah, absolutely. And Alessandro, was there any other moments in the match? What did you think of the Ranocchia incident? What what stood out for you the most? What it's like the the. Compact group that is is creating right now this situation, uh, that's amazing. I mean, Ronaldo deserved the goal just because it's like it, it's proving that Inter is a team. It's not just a single individual. It's not just uh, the greatest striker of the last years. Inter is a team. Everybody can contribute, and uh, and if you are like. Ranocchia is like the defensive plays once every every full moon, or if you are Lautaro, this this young striker with not so much experience. No matter who you are, you can contribute to the game, to the team, to the season. And and at the end, to, tonight was like another another victory to prove that we don't need the cardi after all. We can, I mean. It's, it's better, probably, if he's still part of the group. It's a, a huge capital for, for the team. But at the same time, it's not the team. Yeah, absolutely. 
All right, well, with Rapid behind us now, we can kind of look forward to the round of 16 and the draw that's going to happen within the next few days or within the week. Uh, I'm not too sure, but we've got a host of opponents that we can face just looking at the draw it's tomorrow, now. The draw is tomorrow. It's tomorrow, isn't it? There you go. So we won't have to wait very long at all. Um, guys, do you have a preference? I'll start with Alessandro. Have you, have you had a look at the round of 16 Europa League list yet? Yeah, I said of the usual big names um, like Arsenal, Napoli, uh, um, Salzburg. I think um, that was uh, that's a team to avoid. Um, Sevilla. It's another one that I prefer not to get. Um, if I have to pick one, I would go with Slav- uh, Slava Praga. Um, that's my 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 pick, but. You know, if you want to win the cup or get uh, to a, a, a semi-final, uh, you, you need to to fight against like stronger team than us. So, no matter who you pick, it's fine. We we need to show that we are getting to the the level of the triple eight or something like that that direction. Yeah, I'd also be wary of Benfica. Uh, and Valencia, two two quality sides that will be looking to get their name on the silverware. Mario, did anybody else impress you in the round of 32? And do you have any preference um, for who we might draw out in the round of 16? Um, you know, I think there's just a bunch of strong teams left. Uh, you know, Napoli, uh, Salzburg, Valencia, uh, you know, Chelsea still in there. Arsenal came back and beat Bate Borisov at home. So it's not like it's uh, it's going to be a walk in the park from here. Uh, you know, there's also uh, Rene Ren. I, I don't even know how to pronounce it. The French team, um, but it, it should be good. Um, I wasn't too impressed. Uh, I was kind of shocked to see Eintracht beat Shakhtar because uh, usually Shakhtar is decent, but I guess over the summer and the winter they lost a few people. Um, Lazio was a disappointment. They freaking suck. Yeah, they were a disappointment, big time, to be honest. Um, also, that Krasanada team were able to keep buying Leverkusen into a one-all draw as well, which was an absolute shock uh, at home for Bayer Leverkusen. So they won't be happy with that at all. But anyway, let's move away from that and go back to domestic action. We have a huge match this week, and I was glad to see Marcelo Brozovic come off for some much-needed rest today because he did look a little rusty, and I think it was good for Borja Valero to relieve him because Fiorentina are going to be quite tough at home. Despite the fact that they've only beaten Empoli uh, recently at home, I'm pretty sure they actually haven't won a match at home for a while, besides the one against Empoli. Mario, how do you feel going against uh, the Viola this weekend? Um, if we can put in a performance like we put in today, I think we have uh, a good chance at uh, coming up with three points. Um, Fiorentina hasn't lost in the last uh, six that I've seen. Three wins, three draws. Uh, so they're not, uh, they're not going to be a, a pushover. Um, you know, as long as we keep Icardi on the bench and, uh, you know, we keep the chemistry flowing because uh, I like what I see, to be honest. If this is the team, you know, you switch out uh, Ranocchia with uh, De Vrij, you can even keep Ranocchia there and, you know, I would be like, hey, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's a stretch, but why not? Um, but yeah, if if this is the team we have going forward and they perform like this, confident, I see I see this to be a, a solid performance against Fiorentina, um, even if it's uh, it's away, uh, it shouldn't be shouldn't be a loss of points. Yeah, in terms of team news, I'm noticing that Keita Balde is once again not going to be used. There was a rumor going around that he was going to be free again for this fixture, but. It doesn't look like he'll be used at all, which is a little disappointing. So we hope to see him back soon. I, for one, am a little bit nervous going into this match. I think Fiorentina will give us a good fight. They've got plenty of key quality players. But I think I'd echo what you'd say there, Mario. You swap um, Ranocchia for De Vrij, and all of a sudden our team just looks even more confident um, in in defence. Raja Nangolan, I just think, has hit, to- had hit form at the right time of the season now. And I just can't wait to see him in action again. This was the reason that you know, I was so excited to sign the Ninja. And just seeing him celebrate passionately after every single goal today, it was really something to see, and it was awesome. So I look forward to seeing Raja Nangalan in action again with Perisic against Fiorentina. I think those two are the ones to get us over the line. 
Alessandro, what are your thoughts going into the away uh, picture against Fiorentina this weekend? I would love to see another performance like the the one from today. Uh, I'm not so confident though. Um, Fiorentina against us uh, transform and uh, especially at Fiorentina, it's always been tricky for us to to get away with three points. Um, if they're playing like today again, I, I guess we can win. Um, I, I don't feel so confident though, I, especially for the momentum we have. Every time we things are going well for us, that's the moment where something bad happens. <laughs> so <laughs> Fiorentina is there waiting for us. One, but if you actually look at the game, they were they were actually losing for a couple of minutes, and then VAR decided something crazy that uh, basically um, uh, the ref um, decided to avoid the goal of the opposite team and give a penalty to Fiorentina, and after that, you know, the whole momentum shift and they won the game. But yeah. Um, so they're not playing the best game, the best uh, soccer right now. But um, we're gonna face another um, X, and um, so yeah, I'm curious to see what's gonna happen. Yeah, I would have to agree. So Mario, give us a score prediction for Fiorentina. What do you think? Uh, I could see a goal like a two-one for us. Um... <clears throat> so uh, I think that Muriel scores for them because he's been on fire lately. Uh, he's played in five games. He's scored three goals. He's I think he's he might be <clears throat> the missing striker that they've been uh, needing for like the past season and a half or so. Uh, but I, I still think that we, we find either a couple lucky goals off a corner, or maybe a penalty or some nonsense. But uh, I'm pretty I'm pretty confident going into this one for some odd reason. Um, I like what I see. Cool. And Alessandro, score prediction, please. I hope it's 2-1, as Mario said, but probably it's going to be 2-0 for Fiorentina. Cool. Wow. Oh, yeah. I'm going to go for... I'm going to have to go for 1-0. I think that's our favorite score line to grab three points when we perform pretty poorly. And I, I don't see us performing as well as we did against Rapid, but I think we can nick this over the line. I have nothing but faith in our defence. I think De Vrij and Skriniar will be able to handle the Fiorentina attack, and I think it's just up to us to put one in the back of the net. Yeah, people uh, don't realise how good our defence is, to be honest, because, oh, yeah. I mean, Skriniar and De Vrij are, are top-notch together. There's no doubt about it. So I feel like you can put them against anyone except for Juve, and they're going to shut them down. Because, you know, you have D'Ambrosio, who's solid at the right back. And then you have uh, Asamo, who's been kind of like on the fringe lately. But, uh, and Hadanovic, obviously, who's the best goalie in Serie A right now. Actually, can I change my prediction? <laughs> it's not 2-0. It's, not it's 3-1. Because the, the average goal in this match is 3.8. So, usually, it's oh, like geez. around four goals each, each match. <laughs> So uh, three one for Fiorentina. <laughs> well, that's fair. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're gonna have to move on to the most controversial topic at the moment, and it kind of subsides with the rapid Vienna fixture because filming our goals today, it was filming the reactions of Mauro Icardi and Juan Donata. I'm gonna go straight to you, Mario. Did you notice anything about Mauro, how he wasn't celebrating at all? And today there was just a pretty much, there was just a showing from the Ragazzi today that they were unified without him. We really don't need Mauro Icardi. We really don't. Is, is it time, was today really the biggest wake-up call for the majority of the fans, do you think, personally? I think, you know, it's, it's starting to become evident that we don't need him because Every time I, I, I talk to people about Icardi and how he's, uh, he really doesn't do anything for us, you know, it's always like, who's going to score? Who's going to do this? Who's going to do that? Well, I mean, we've proven in the past, what is it, two or three weeks that anyone is capable of scoring at any point because you have Iveranokia scoring freaking bombasos over here. 
so that that just goes to show you that this team is it's it's turned a new leaf since since he's been uh, benched and to be and he's just being petty at this point with his his bullshit on the sidelines where he's not celebrating he's sitting there with a with a hat that says freedom or some nonsense you know as if he's freaking Mourinho getting uh, getting banned from Serie A so you know I just think it's a bunch of nonsense and he's really showing who he really is and you know people will either continue to deny it that he's an asshole and he really isn't all that he's cracked up to be or they'll be like all right you know i want what's best for inter and if he's not on the field and we're winning let's let it let's let it rock yeah absolutely is there any part of you at all that wants him to stay uh the thing with that is is i wouldn't mind seeing him as a sub because if you think of it he's as he's one, he's a lethal striker. You can't. There's no doubt about it. You can't argue it, no matter how, how much you want to. Um, so, my the only issue is the amount of uh, effort and uh, amount of minutes that you get out of him. Realistically, because if he's on the field 90 minutes, you might get three minutes out of him where he's he's uh, he's getting the ball, he's touching the ball, he's he's moving, he's creating chances. Maybe he gets a flick, but. If it change of pace, sure, you throw him on if you're losing one nothing. if Lautaro's uh, struggling, Calderba's missing open goals again. But I don't, I don't know. I, I, we don't need him, I, I don't think. He's just a cancer to this team. And unless he changes his act and becomes a team player, you know, it's going to be either we freeze him in his contract and he doesn't play or we sell him. I don't really know what he expects or what Wanda expects, really, because we're not, we're not going to give him the armband back. And if, if rumors are true, we're still looking to offer him seven to eight million, which is almost double what he's making now. So he can quit, quit the angry boy that mummy doesn't give him a toy act because it's just yeah. bullshit, to be honest, man. And we'll, we're still going to offer him after all this crap that he's put us through, after all this turmoil he's put us through, we're still going to offer him another contract with almost double his money. The fact that he's carrying on like this is nothing short of a joke. Alessandro, do you, do you agree with us or do you have anything else to add? Well, just a couple of things. Honestly, I I would like for him to sign a new contract and take the 110 million clause off of the contract. So in the summer, we can sell it to a higher price. That's one thing. Uh, I don't think, even if, uh, I, I think we need Icardi from here to the end of the season just because we cannot buy a new striker. Uh, and Lautaro... I mean, it's, it's, it's good, but it, it cannot play from here to the end of the season every single match. Yeah, I don't think he's, he's ready to that level. Uh, I hope so, but I doubt. Anyway, so we kind of need a card. <clears throat> We're stuck with um, him. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So um, that's, that's one thing. Uh, the second thing, I don't think even if he comes back and um, his scores and whatever. I think at the end of the season is going to leave just because if you look at what he did just this week with the injury that is not an injury and sitting on the side and not celebrating, all these kind of things, it's not a mature person. It, it cannot be our captain, even if he comes back and score every single game. That doesn't give you anything. I mean, that's your job. That doesn't mean that you represent this team because as soon as something doesn't go in in your way, then you do like a, a baby that wants the ball and go home because he doesn't want to play anymore. That's not that's not the symbol of our team. I prefer give the armband to, to Ranocchio that is like or to even to Candreva. He's like a professional when he needs to play, even if it's like two minutes, five minutes, it doesn't say a thing. It just go there, give the best. And, you know, it's like, it's not the, the best play in the world, but at least he put effort. And, uh, and that's more something that I want to see from my, my captain, honestly. To add to that, they, the, the two you mentioned, Ranocchi and Candreva, they sort of embody what Inter is about. They put their head down, they do, they do the hard work. They, they run up and down for 90 minutes. 
Uh, Kandreva, yeah, sure, he misses goals. He he doesn't play the best the way we want him to, but he doesn't complain. He's always been there. He's always assisted Icardi. He's, had, he's played his role. Ranocchia plays his role. You want him two minutes, you want him to strike in the center mid, he'll do whatever you want. He'll shut up. He puts his head down. He works hard. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I want to have a quick comment as well about our uh, Agent Zero, our Mr. Under the Cover, Diego Godin who was able to down Juve yesterday. Mario, what was your reaction to seeing Diego Godin score that goal yesterday? And we are actually, coincidentally, I'm sure it's not really 100% coincidental, but the last 24 hours have seemed to seep through that. A signature is very, very close for us for Godin. What are your thoughts on that? Uh, if, if he's showing this inter heart that he has, you know, it can only get better from here. I mean, he's got the experience. He's a leader. He's uh He's a world-class defender, and, you know, we have the Vrij, Skriniar, who are, you know, top defenders, but I think this takes us to the next level rather than just being a good defense. Now we could be a great defense. Yeah, it's always important to have that level of depth because you're always one injury away from having to be, uh, having to call in one of your bench players, and that's where the level you want to be at. You see teams like Manchester City have a world-class player for each position twice. And some of these other Premier League and Spanish clubs, they, they don't tolerate anything other than two world-class players for each position. So I'm over the moon with it. Alessandro, your reaction to Diego Godin? Well, um, I have a good friend, uh, an Atletico Madrid supporter, and he's still hoping that at the end of the day he's going to renew it, uh, renew the contract for them. Um, I'm a little bit worried after the game for yesterday. Um, Simeone just renewed his contract and now this goal I don't know I really hope already signed for us or I, I, I think he, he did the, the physical test already during the, the winter break but until I don't see something like Juventus did with uh, Ramses um, I, I'm still like worried you know yeah, I'd share your I'd share your nervousness. To be honest, you really never know what's going to happen in modern football, so we'll just have to see how it pans out. But I'm very very optimistic. Uh, going to a couple of fan comments, uh, Daniele says Nangolan and Perisic are the ones who fell out with Icardi. You can tell via the reactions to the players who have scored and set up the goals. Do you guys have a comment to that at all? Do you guys notice anything interesting about that, Mario? Uh, you can definitely see that there's a change in mentality between Perisic, uh, obviously. Um, Nainggolan, I feel like maybe he kind of just found his stride. He, uh, he, um, you know, he's, he's feeling better. You can see that he wasn't 100% fit before. And now he's maybe like 80, 90% as it seems. But uh, just across the board, not even just those two, everyone wants to be there. They want to be on the field. They want to show what they can do for the club. They're showing that they can lead this team to be uh, the great Inter that we all want it to be. Yeah, absolutely. And Alessandro, do you any comments on Perisic and Nangolan's all of a sudden maturity? Do you think there's a correlation with the issues? And do you feel like having these players at top level at the moment, we should be looking to tie them down further? Yeah, I think Paris is for sure has something to do with the Cardi situation. Probably Brazovic as well. I don't know. Um, I don't think Nangolan. I mean, Paris and Brazovic played already at least a couple of years with the Cardi. Uh, Nangolan is new, so I doubt he had enough time to create this, like, you know, like um, strong um, affection or not with one of the other player. So, I mean, I, I can totally see Paris is trying 110% now while just three weeks ago, it wasn't even trying like 5%, you know? Yeah, it was really noticeable. Now, Mario, you're seeing the difference in Paris. It's surely, like, honestly, man, on his day, this guy's one of the best left wingers in the world. And only about a couple of weeks ago, we were talking about how he should be sold. So what are your thoughts now? Should we be looking to make him one of our top priorities and hopefully Beppe Marotta's working something there? I'm really hoping that they finally understand that you can't be building a team for Icardi. Uh, you have great players. Perisic has been and has always been this great winger. 
that he's he's just so well rounded. He can shoot, he can cross, he can pass, he can score, he can take on his man, he's fast, you know, he's good with both feet. Like this is exactly what you want. And if we don't uh, exercise his abilities, yes, you're going to see him cut down the line, do the same shit every week. And he's going to look like an average player because you have an average looking system where he, he's just not built for to serve Ikardi in that way. He's He has to go and be able to be creative. Nobody has the creative aspect in this team. And Perisic is the only person that possesses any kind of flair, any type of, uh, uh, what's the word? They, they take um, initiative to, to try to make a big play. You see him shooting now. You see him cutting in left foot, right foot, whatever it takes to, to create a chance. This is what we've been missing from him. And I feel like now without having the, the game plan be uh, give the ball to Ikardi in the box as often as possible, um, you know, he's starting to shine. Nainggolan's starting to be like, all right, uh, let me play with Lautaro. Let me, let me make some moves. Let me play soccer the way, the way it's supposed to be played rather than just dribble down the line and cross. Yeah. Can I add one thing? I, I just wonder if Spalletti has something to do with this too because... Um, we know how he likes to play on the wings. The wings go in the end, cross for Icardi. And now Icardi is not there. Lautaro is a different player. So Spalletti cannot ask the same kind of play. Now they have to do basically whatever they, they want. <laughs> like the, they can, as uh, Mario was saying, they can go in the center, they can shoot, they can cross. They have more... Um, um, freedom, freedom to do exactly um, to do what is best in that particular moment while before we decard on the field the, the only uh, dicta from Spalletti was run until the end and cross the ball run and cross that was it so I, I feel that Perisic could be frustrated by, by these two of course, a matter of trusting the players versus trusting the system. And, you know, I'm glad that our players are being trusted to express themselves a little bit. And I look forward to see what's coming with it. Guys, conscious of time, we're going to finish off there with a poll that I put up about oh, 15 minutes after the match finished this morning. It got 212 votes altogether to keep or sell Mauro Icardi. And we've got 122 votes for keep and 90 votes for sell. So... Few of our fans still leaning more towards the keeping of our um, ex-captain. And we'll just have to see how it plays out from here. I'm sure the saga is not over anytime soon. All right, guys. Thank you so much for everyone who has listened to Inter Worldwide. If you haven't already, be sure to like and subscribe to the YouTube channel and, of course, our social media platforms. Alessandro, thank you very much for joining me, my friend. I look forward to hearing from you soon. As always, thank you. Okay, and Mario, as always, my friend, thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me. It's always a pleasure. Anytime. And from all of us here at Inter Worldwide, Forza Inter, Forza Inter Worldwide. Ciao, ragazzi. Ciao. Bang.